welcome back i it's really windy today and i had to get out a few times and i did not like it i love the wind don't get me wrong but when you have to go in other places of business and your hair is like wild and crazy it's a whole different story i just cleared my throat and it hurt my where i had my teeth removed today i've had gauze in my mouth a lot today i had my procedure a little bit after 12 and i'm just going to say we were done by one and I have gauze in my mouth since six maybe and every time i took it out it was just soaked and but i had to eat because i haven't ate since noon <laughs> and so i took it out when i got home i got soup and i made sure i ate on this side but clearing my throat that vibration hurts I have one stitch he went in there he had to well let me let me give you some kind of story behind it on the first molar he had removed was the bits that was left behind after a root canal with the temp on it temporary crown that i was supposed to get a permanent crown so you know how they leave a little bit of tooth left to glue a crown on there that's what i've had so it was it has been unprotected from you know food and all that for the temporary crown fell off maybe the end of december of 2018 because i left him 2019 january and i think i left him two weeks after it came off because Things were like domino affecting quite a bit. And it was around that time where I'm like, I'm done. I'm so done. He, as you know, would take all of my money and tell me we couldn't afford things, but he can afford brand new pickup trucks that were over $62,000 and three or four pair of shoes at the time. Um, every time it wasn't just one pair of shoes he had to buy. And he would tell me we couldn't afford a crown, which was only like two or $300. The last one was the one he said, have a feeling build up on it until I graduated college. And that was the one that had the abscess on it. And I think that's the one he had to shatter. And <laughs> I thought maybe he broke these teeth down here I'm not 100% sure about that because he had, I don't know what he was using, so I, I can't look. I just can't do it. But he had something that was gripping my tooth, and he was literally shaking. And then, I don't know if it slid off my tooth or my part, part of my tooth came out, but he hit my bottom teeth. And I thought, oh, shoot. And it was so hard that i'm pretty sure there has to be a chip in there somewhere but the other one that he had to shatter to get out he said some root canals will kind of like bond in there and they really have to just pull it out and he would say one more piece one more piece okay one more piece and i'm like you said that three pieces ago <laughs> I know I don't know which one i don't want to put my tongue back there and feel but i think it's the last one he had to take out has the stitch. It still might be bleeding. I don't taste it, but I don't know, to be honest. I thought I was going to cry over it. He was very kind and thoughtful. And I told him, if I start crying, just keep working because I'm really sad about this. And he touched my arm and he said, it will be okay. And I don't know if it was his office or actually him, but I got a text wanting to know how I was. And I said, hey, I'm doing good so far. I've had to take two pain pills. And the numbing was coming off in Walmart because I had to get food. And uh, it was really starting to hurt. Um, and then I took one right after I, well, I was in the parking lot when I took the other one. And I'm here to say talking when I put these two teeth together to form certain words, that vibration, it doesn't feel good at all. And I don't feel that bad about it. In the near future, I hope my only option is to get a partial 
and I'm, I'm okay with that, I guess. You know, a part of me feels like what man would ever want to be with me because I have a partial, and that's silly. <laughs> that is so silly, and I can't even imagine why I would even think that. There's people all over the world with false teeth, and they're, they're married, so what makes me worse than they are, I guess. And of course, you know, he said, if the stitch doesn't come out within 10 days, call and I can go in and he'll take it out. And I hope it comes out. I really just, I don't hate dentist. I just have been traumatized by him since I was 11. And I just, that fear has just been stuck with me. <laughs> it's, it's cemented in there, but he was very good. He gave me nitrous. I told him that, you know, if I was on it too long, I tend to get sick. Well, as soon as he had him pulled, he told me, I got the oxygen on for you now. I'm like, thank you. The uh, dental, dentist assistant, you know, the one that hands him the tools and stuff. I don't know what obsessed her to do this, but I had told her I was a medical assistant and I was familiar with certain things and I loved x-rays because I was looking at mine. And she brings over the tissues with pieces of my tooth, teeth <laughs> on them. And there was blood. She was showing me the roots. And at first I was fixed to say, no, 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 no. Because when it concerns me or my kids, it makes me sick. But when it's somebody else, I can deal with it. It's no big deal. But once I started looking at them, I'm like, oh, that's not bad. And I'm just, you know, oh, that's cool. And you can see all of my shattered teeth i didn't see a whole tooth on there so probably both of them shattered come to think of it but i did see roots uh, of the tooth you know the one that goes up in your gum and it's curved you know something like that i saw one and now i don't know if i had drool or blood all over me i didn't see it but she got a washcloth and wiped my chin all up and i have a red tint to my face and so the hose that goes across, the, you know, the nitrous nose piece, the hose that's like a crinkly, it left blinds <laughs> on me and it rubbed that makeup off. And then when she got that washcloth and rubbed my chin clean, my chin was red. So it didn't bother me. I wasn't going anywhere else. I know they seen worse. So when I left, I come straight home because I had a package waiting for me of a, something I bought myself. And I put more makeup on, as you can tell. And then I went to Walmart and got my food. And I'm not feeling well. I don't know why. I ate some marketplace soup that I got from Walmart in their little tubs. It was broccoli and cheddar. And I don't know why, if that was it that made me sick. I don't know if it's the pain pills. I don't know. But this is what I bought myself on Amazon. You put your cell phone on it and you can do it, you know, with it horizontally or vertically. And now that I don't have a TV and I'm starting to miss TV since mine broke, I've been watching TikTok in the mornings and then when I go to the bathroom, I take my phone and I don't have anywhere to prop it up in the bathroom. So I thought I could get one of them. Because if I stand it against like the mirror in the counter, it slides and falls. So I got this and I would show you what it looks like, but I, I'm using my phone. <laughs> Once again at work before I left, I saw mini orbs again. It's so funny because they still come right in my face, get my attention and they float off. It just fascinates me how I'm seeing these like crazy and it's like they're drawn to me. I don't know if they go up to everybody like that, because I know everybody cannot see them, but it's ironic that all day long I see them. And, and I love it, I love it. I tell them, hi, and I welcome you with love. And I've even told one to come back and it, it did, slowly, but it did. Last night, I, I don't remember all about last night. I took a shower, went to bed, 
I rushed to bed, I should say. And because it was getting late and I needed my, my sleep. And when I started getting drowsy, I put my phone down. Actually, it was a little bit before because after I put my phone down, I started feeling it. And then I opened my eyes and what I saw was kind of weird. It was the haze in my room that I have before they enter or during, I don't know for sure. And it looked like a hole was opening in the haze. And then when I looked up and I seen the haze and all, and I saw the hole, then it started closing back. And I'm like, what in the world is that? I've never seen that before. And so I closed my eyes because, and I thought in my head, well, a lot of the times when I open my eyes, they disappear, depending on what entities they are. Some stay, but this one gave me the indication that it was leaving because I seen it. When that happens, I just close my eyes because I know they're either gonna leave, come back, I don't know. And I'm just like, okay, it looks like you're leaving anyway, so I'm just gonna close my eyes and go to sleep. And that's all I remember. I, I don't recall anything crawling in bed with me. I know that sounds weird if this is the first time you've heard me say that. But I have what I think is one of my dogs or even a cat uh, crawl in bed with me and curl up with me. Something tells me it's one of the dogs that I've had because here lately, I've been really mourning them. And I mourn severely bad the ones I even hate saying this. The ones that I had to put down for reasons that my mom had like put me in the corner to do. As in, I've told you, you know, she was a dog hoarder more or less. And I had my oldest, which was not even one yet. The dogs that she had would mess in the house. And we always got evicted because she refused to work. But once my daughter was old enough, I started going back to work, which was probably nine months old to be actual or ac accurate. And uh, so I was working this one time. She said she wanted to work and I can watch my daughter in which I said, okay. She refused to pay all my car, which was the only vehicle we, ha we had and it got repoed. So I was trying to get another car and we got evicted because she quit her job, as she always did. She never liked working. She was a lazy, no good bum. And yes, mom, I know you're watching. I am not embarrassed in saying that. Um, but with all the dogs that we had, it was extremely hard to find a place. And so I had told her my child was very important to me and to have a home for her and that we would have to put some of them down. And then she told me if we did that, that I would be responsible to go in and make sure that they were put down because she swore that they would lie and say they put them down and then send them off to abusive families, which made me feel horrible. But... I felt that that was my only option at the time in which now I know I was very wrong. So I have, I had to do that twice. And at this time, since my awakening, well, throughout my life, of course, that's come to my mind and I felt guilty. But since my awakening, I have extreme tremendous painful guilt over those decisions that I had to make. I'm like, I'm sure there was a way to solve that problem without putting them down. But my mom had put in my head that if we gave them away, that they would be abused. And she would say things like that my whole entire life. And I believed her because I was so brainwashed. And so I had that fear. I loved the dogs and I didn't want them abused. But to this day, when I start thinking about it, I break down and beg for forgiveness because I have tremendous guilt. 
So I'm going to change that subject really quick because I don't want to start bawling right now. I... I don't think I've seen any orbs to be actual... To be, to be honest. I know yesterday there probably wasn't any because I didn't see any while, while editing. And I think it's because they knew I was in a hurry to get the video done and out. So I could have, you know, showered and went to bed. And I feel that they know that I'm not feeling very well right now. And maybe they're just not floating around. Or I haven't seen them yet. One or the other. I don't know. I do feel many souls around right now. And I feel that they're, they're, they're always loving. They're always so loving. And I want to say this really quick. And consider what I say. Don't just think and answer out like that, you know. But I see on YouTube and TikTok a lot of false prophets. And what I mean by that is somebody that can swear up and down they can give you a reading. Or they swear up and down they can do predictions and... Some people can, without a doubt. But I know 80% of these people aren't. I want to ask you to feel, even if you have to close your eyes while you're listening to them, feel with your inner being if they are accurate enough. Use your common sense. And my best advice is if it doesn't resonate with you, then you know. It's not accurate. That's your intuition saying, uh-uh. Also, if you get body chills or just goosebumps, that is an indication what you're listening to is true and accurate. So keep that in mind. Also, a true star seed will not charge anybody for services. And if they do, they have gone rogue. And I'm not saying that to be funny. I'm seriously true because I've said it before. We as star seeds are not going to be up there signing our contract saying, you know, okay, I am coming to earth and I'm going to charge everybody a fee to give them a reading or a prediction or whatever, or I'm not doing it. I'm not helping anybody if, unless they pay me. That's not a star seed. A starseed knows that they come down here to help any and everybody that they can. And they're supposed to do it free. They're not supposed to be charging for the gifts that they have. So know that. The only thing that I charge, and I, I haven't even started it yet, is my hypnosis. But that's not using my gifts. That's using something completely different. Something that I was taught. And it's a technique that I verbally use. And, and I charge very low fee for that. But I'm not going to sit here and charge anybody for me to read them. Or heal them. Never will I do that. I didn't come to earth to charge people for my gifts that God gave me. And allowed me to have it just frustrates me this is another long video <laughs> i think i'm going to end this here because i don't feel good but i really wanted to put one out for you guys and right now before i edit it's almost 22 minutes long so and my hair is all jacked up <laughs> I love you guys so, so much, and I still have new subscribers coming in. I want to say thank you for subscribing and welcome. I truly hope that you stay a while, and I hope that you like all things extraterrestrial, spirits, spiritual, uh, you name it, you're in the right place. I hope you stay, and I will put out another one of these tomorrow for sure. So I love you guys tremendously, and I'm sending you all love, light, and peace. Bye.